Hello, hello there. My name is Murray. I'm with my co-host Corey, and we are the Real Guys. This is Sign Radio, and this is the Real Show with two E's. The music you just heard was "Immigrant Song" by Led Zeppelin from 1970. How was that year, Corey? Yeah, it was a very good one. A very All right, good one. cool. We've got a packed show for you today for our broadcast. As always, I'm accompanied by my co-host Corey. How are you doing today, Corey? I'm doing very well, thank you. Good, good, good. It's nice. It's nice to hear you. You know, we don't we don't talk a lot, and it's nice to. It's nice to get around to hear you every now and then, you know, when we do these. Yeah, every week. Every week, that's the one. Well, you're the only one that's here, so I've got to talk to someone. Yeah. The voices in my head don't count, Corey. Anyway, so we've got... <laughs> today we bring you an instalment of a popular series. It's the Acting Spotlight. We'll be serving as a tribute, remembering honoring a great actor and actress that is either still starring in films today or is no longer with us. But that's not the case today, as our actor is... One of the one of the comedic greats with a wide range of credits from 1991 all the way up to our year 2020 and 2021. Who are we talking about, Corey? We are talking about Mr. Jack Black. Yes, with 160 credits, we're talking School of Rock. We're talking King Kong, Nacho Libre, Kung Fu Panda. It's indeed Jack Black. What do you think of what do you think of uh, Mr. Tenacious D himself, Mr. Jack Black? Very good. As far as comedy goes, one of my favourite comedic actors. Mm. With so many roles, Jack Black's career is expanding even as we speak. So as always, I've clawed the depths of the film review site letterbox to give you only the best of the worst. It's time to play that everyone together now. Good film, bad review. Yes. Are you ready? For I it? hope everyone at home. I hope everyone at home joined in with that. Everyone, uh, should we should we say it all together now, everybody? Three, two, one. Good film, bad film, review. Bad review. You didn't do it on time, Corey. It's fine. We've got delay. It's all right. Right, okay. <laughs> we'll have to go with it. So, you can play along at home and try to guess which of these Jack Black films earned this bad review. Are you ready to play, Corey? I'm ready as ever. We're going to start off with a half a star review here. <clears throat> I'm, I'll get into my, uh, get into my, uh, reviewing, my reviewing voice, which is my normal voice. I was not sober when I decided to pay to rent this movie. Pay is in all caps. I thought it was going to be a yep. fun watch, like similar to the Pokemon movie or 21 Jump Street, but oh boy, it was so bad. Thank God I was intoxicated for I hardly remember much of it. I would say kids up to 12 years old might like it. A lot of aggressive capitalization. Okay. Would you like to hear that review again? Yes, please. <clears throat> I was not sober when I decided to pay to rent this movie. I thought it was going to be a fun watch, like similar to the Pokemon movie or 21 Jump Street, but oh boy, it was so bad. Thank God I was intoxicated, for I hardly remember much of it. I would say kids up to 12 years old might like it. Okay. What are your thoughts? Uh, I mean... Mm. Does anything stick out, perhaps? One film sticks out. I don't know why. Right. Um, I've had a I've had a very very similar experience to this gentleman. Mm-hmm. Very angry. Um, well, I well, I watched a film, uh, okay. and I I quite enjoyed it. However, um, so I want to go for the same film because I because there's also a Jack Black film. Right. Enough. Yes. Well, well, they have to be a Jack Black film because this is Jack Black week, Corey. Yeah. So. I'm going to ha- go for my first guess. I'm going to hazard a guess, because also you mentioned Pokemon, which is also animated. Right. I know 21, I know 21 Grim Street is not. Mm-hmm. I don't know how he made that comparison, but... No, neither do I. Um, I'm going to go for Kung Fu Panda. Right. Any particular Kung Fu Panda? I, know there's I knew you were going to say that. I knew <laughs> you were going to say that. It's one out of three. You've got a third of a chance of guessing right, even if it is Kung Fu Panda. It might not be. One, two, or three? First one. The first, you're going to go for just Kung Fu Panda, regular Kung Fu Panda. Yeah. And I'm afraid you're incorrect. Which, is it Kung Fu it's, Panda? It's not, it's not Kung Fu Panda. Oh, okay. It is Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. Oh, uh, okay. Right, 2017. I thought you'd get it, because I think Pokemon movie came out, that, I assume what he means is Detective Pikachu. Ah, uh, right. It came out the same year, I think. Right, right. Or t- I don't again. I don't. I have no idea why he made the Twenty One Jump Street comparison. You see, I was thinking. I was thinking of the actual Pokemon movies that like all from anime or animated from like years oh, ago. Oh right, you should have been thinking Detective Pikachu. I thought you get it through mm. that. 
came out same year. Oh well. Right. Would you like this next review? Yes, please. It's one star. So this is very short. Very short. Very sweet. Ahem. Watched it in a room with women constantly talking over it. Though I think I prefer watching this film that way. <sighs> oh, <laughs> Sorry, you've got okay. to laugh. You've got to laugh. Not much to go on there. No. Nope. I just enjoyed the verbiage. You know what? I think I'm going to go Kung Fu Panda again. You're going to go... If, if, just, listen, if you go Kung Fu Panda for every one of these films, I will not mind. One of them has got to be correct. One of them is going to be right. Yeah, I, I, right, okay. I promise you, one of them will be correct. So I'm, which... I'm, I'm right, which Kung Fu Panda? Panda? First one. The first, again? Yes. <laughs> you know what? I'm going to give you half a point. Is it like the second one or something? No, it's the third one. Oh. It's Kung Fu Panda 3 2016. So I'll give you a half point for that, Corey, shall I? Okay, okay. I've never given you a half point before, but <laughs> Okay, okay. Are you are, are you are you ready for this third one? Yeah. Right, okay. Um now often what I do on Good Film Bad Review is I get two review I get two reviews for each film and I and I and I try and guess which one is the best, right? To give you. Yeah. But this one, the, both are so funny, I'm having a hard picking which one. I'll pick the bottom one, because I, I think it's a little bit better. Right, this is half a star, okay? Jack Black is the poor man's Adam Sandler. Directors think he can just show up and his movies will make money. This was so terrible, I wish I could give it less than half a star. Adam Sandler, though, was turned into the poor man's Adam Sandler. Gone are the days where he could phone it in and his movies would make $100 million. Of course he keeps movie on. He found Netflix will give him a pile of money for new content. There you go. Right. I love how it just turns into talking about Jet Black and then it turns into talking about Adam Sandler. He goes completely off. Okay, so... I I could try a triple. Maybe you pick two Comfy Pandas. I'm not going to do it. Right, okay. Maybe I did. Maybe I did. I'm going to say it's a live action one, which right. doesn't narrow it down at I'm all. I'm fascinated. I'm fascinated by the sentence, of course he keeps movie on. What does that mean? <laughs> you know what? Just because I think... It, uh, what does that mean? It's, it's, uh, what a pick. Oh, man. This is... um. Of course he keeps movie on. What does that even... What What does he mean? Like the movie is on? Or is it... Does he keep the movie on? Like, is he keeping it running? <laughs> you know what? Because because this film's weird and somewhat confusing, and it seems mm. like something Adam Sandler would be a part of, I'm just mm. going to... Uh, I'm just going to go for it and just put, uh, put this out there. But I'm going to go Nacho Libre. No, you go Nacho Libre, right? You pulled that one out of your back pocket, haven't you? Yeah. Uh, but you're but you're not right. No, I didn't think it would be. No, you're incorrect. It's Gulliver's Travels. I forgot he's in that. 2010, yeah. Mm. Not one of his best, but no. Still half a point on that one. That was a horrid showing. I'm sorry, Corey. Hey, I didn't get zero. It's fine. You didn't get zero. No, you got half a point. I give you half a point, which is better than nothing. It is. But still, a man like Jack Black has had many a role and many a many a interesting encounter, many an experience, shall we say? Yeah. So, and we've decided to go out there and troll the depths of of the internet and find our favourite Jack Black fact, our favourite fact. We yeah, haven't now. Do. I just we both have one fact each. It's got to be the best fact. We think. I have my fact. Shall I go first? Uh, yeah, you can go first. Okay, it's my top. It's it, it's my top one Jack Black fact. Can you have yeah, a top good. one or just a top something? Yeah, I mean, fine, it works. Yeah, it's a top one because there's only one fact, yes. and it is the fact is simply Tenacious D. Now, for people yep. who are unfamiliar with what Tenacious D is, because uh, I find yeah. that some people don't even know what it is. 
Uh, no. It's defined. It's defined on Wikipedia as an American comedy rock duo. I mean, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, formed in Los Angeles, California, in 1994, which I'd even think it was gone. I th- I thought it was like last year he came up with it. <laughs> but I mean, no, yeah. since 1994, founded by actors Jack Black and uh, yeah. Kyle Gass, who are members of the yeah. Actors Gang Theatre Company. Uh, the duo's name is derived from the phrase tenacious defense, which was made by NBA basketball sportscaster Marv Albert. Nice. Not, uh, yeah, well, I didn't even know that. So um, there we go. Um, of course, Jack Black is known as Mr. Tenacious D. But anyway, yes. um, I put like titles of songs that I found funny. <laughs> go for it. May I introduce you to uh, Kickapoo, Mas- Master Exploder. Also classic. Jesus Ranch. Nice. Rock Your Socks. I like quite like that. I like, I like that one. I like that one. Also classic. And my personal favourite, Don't Blow It Cage. Yeah. All good picks, I think. But that is that is that is my fact. That is that is my yeah. fact. It's simply tenacious D. Like how many albums do they have out? Uh, Probably five. Yeah. I can name three of them. All oh, right, okay, go on then. Uh, there's Rise of the Phoenix, mm-hmm. which got blurred in uh, stores. Yeah. Right enough. There's Apocalypto, which came out like a year ago, I think. Okay. And then there's Pick of Destiny, which is obviously based on the film. Yeah, we have uh, there's Tenacious Demo, which is an EP. Nice. There's there's the original Tenacious D album in 2001. Yeah. There's Defun Pack, which is sounds amazing. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's the pick of destiny, more yep. rocktastic, which sounds cool. okay. Uh, Rise of the Phoenix, which you just mentioned. Yeah. Yep. Jazz, which was in 2012. Uh, Tenacious D Live, and Post Apocalypto. Okay. That's the one. Yeah. You mentioned. So still, it's amazing. Honestly, I know he's credited as a music- m- musician, magician. I just said magician. Is he a magician <laughs> as well? He could probably do both. He could probably, he could be a magician. He's got one of those faces where he looks like he could might be a magician. Yeah, exactly. But he's also a musician. So, yes. so that makes him, uh, that makes him doubly talented. He's a triple threat. Is Jack Black. He is indeed. So I, I must ask you for your, what is your top one? Your top one, uh, Jack Black. Max? So mine's, mine's also very, very simple. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Mine is just for very simple fact of, and again, some people may not realise this, I, to be fair, didn't fully realise this, or I just completely forgot about it. Jack Black is not is, is not his name. No, it isn't. It's not. It's not Jack Black. Okay. Um, his actual name is Thomas Jacob Black. Yes. So Black, the Black's correct, but obviously, obviously, he's just changed it for uh, Hollywood reasons. I prefer. I think Jack Black sounds better. He's known by many names. He is. Such as J. B. Jables. Yep. And and my personal favourite, Jablinski. Yes. Which I think his YouTube channel Jablinski Games comes from or something like uh, that. it is. That's that is correct. Yes. Him and uh, him and Jack White also did a video and called myself Jack Grey, and I find that quite funny. Oh nice. I quite enjoyed that. <laughs> yes, yeah, I imagine so. Um did you collect more than one fact? Did you go ahead and get two facts? Yeah. Well, the second one is uh, it's it involves uh, School of Rock. Right. Okay. Um, there's a scene in School of Rock where um, the main character does a stage dive. Yeah. And Jack Black wanted to do this himself. Obviously, obviously he's a musician. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. He's quite a rock and roll guy. So obviously, the thought of doing a stage dive, stage dive, mm-hmm. no, it's not a stage drive. Even I'm saying the wrong word. The stage drive. He's going to drive off the stage in his car. Uh, yeah, or he could do a stage jive and have a little jig. He could do um, a stage jive. He could do a, a. I'm trying to think of other words that rhyme with di- with dive now. That um, Stage drive, stage stage jive. Nothing else. But, but obviously, he wants to do it now. So instead of getting a stuntman to do a jump for him, stage jive. They decided to reverse the roles, and instead, they hired stuntmen to catch him. Oh, nice. So he wouldn't hurt himself. I, quite, I find that quite amusing. 
like rather than getting a stunt man, I just got a stunt man to catch him instead. Yeah, no, they're, they're good at catching. I would hope so. Mm. But much like our last acting spotlight, which was on uh, Mr. Christopher Lee, yeah, we have also devised our top five Jack Black roles. We have. Now, I think I'll, I'll kick this off. We'll go from five to one, shall we? Yeah, yeah sure. So my number five is... Uh, it's his it's his role in Jumanji. It's Professor Oberon. Nice. Because I think in the first film, I'm gonna end up talking about Jumanji and please stop me if I just stop talking about Jumanji. Um Would it? if I just start endlessly talking about Jumanji because I could. But I think the reboot especially, it brought it a yeah. title, you know, like the old video game sort of feeling. And they're all in the characters like Dwayne the Rock Johnson is like played by the sort of the, the skinny dweeb guy inside him. And yeah. Kevin Hart is supposed to be like the jock, but he's Kevin Hart, so he's small and, you know. And um, uh, the feature, uh, one of the features of our last episode, Karen Gillan is back as well. Uh, she is. And she's sort of the, the nerdy sort of girl is in um, Karen Gillan's body. And then Jack Black gets the sort of hot, sort of bombshell cheerleader yeah. type. And I think that is, first off, that is completely perfect, because if Jack Black is anything, he is a chameleon. And yes. he can just sort of become sort of anyone and make that person funny. And there's a sort of scene where um he is it is it Kevin Hart or is it Jack Black? He goes up to the water, looks at himself, and he's just horrified by the fact that he's just this um middle aged, overweight man. Yeah, but I think that's Jack Black. That is Jack Black, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think it shows his capacity to just infuse his own uh, comedy style into into things, yeah. which is what he does a lot. He sort of doesn't make the role, but he makes the role his. Yeah, in that sort of way, the same way that uh, many actors do, where they become like they get that notoriety for like, oh yeah, he's he's uh, he's still sort of that Jack Black type character, but he's playing like a uh, a teacher or uh, or a panda or something like that. Yeah, that's how it. That's how it goes. But that is yeah, where exactly. I picked um, his role in the two, the two uh, reboot Jumanji films, Jumanji: yes. Welcome to the Jungle and Jumanji: uh, The Next Level or The Next State, whatever it is. It that Next Level, I believe. Okay, there we go. Right, that is my that is my Good number five. five pick. What is your your number five pick? So I've picked number five. Now I, I actually quite enjoyed this film, but I know a lot of people found it a bit hit and miss, which is kind of why I also put it lower. Right, uh, I. I have gone for the very, very simple name of uh, Nacho, which, oh, okay. if you couldn't have guessed from mentioned earlier, is from Nacho Libre. Nacho Libre. I'll admit, he's not on my list. No, and to that, I'm not surprised. Mm. <laughs> I'm, I, just, I like the film, but it is also more the fact that I've watched this God knows how many times when I was younger. Right, okay. So it could also be a nostalgia thing. But for anyone who is unaware, I'll briefly explain it. It's... Yeah. A, a guy who works at a church becomes a Mexican wrestler. Yeah. Literally it. Because he, he needs money. Mm-hmm. So he becomes a wrestler. And then it's this weird, like, he falls in love. But because he's a masked wrestler, no one knows who he is. And then it's the whole thing of he takes his mask off and beats this massive gold guy. Yeah. Um, and he has this, like, his friend who's a really skinny kind of, like, sidekick. And that's it. Mm-hmm. But I find him quite enjoyable as this, like, because it's just like kind of you said, he fits pretty much everything. Yeah. And it's like, he's very good at being a wrestling underdog. Mm-hmm. Very good. Mm-hmm. You're a big, you're a big uh, fan of, of professional wrestling, aren't you, Corey? Yes, I've, I've made references to wrestling uh, numerous times. I think we both and have. We show. both have. We might end up having a, having a pro wrestling episode on the real show, even. Yeah, see, I think that's also why I like the film, because it's the film that involves wrestling. It's yeah, like, yeah it's no, I like that. I like that. But yeah, my, my number five pick is Nacho. Right, okay. Now, we're going to go down to my number four pick, which might surprise you, but also it won't surprise anyone who I assume is a fan of Jack Black. Yep. I've gone for uh, Jeff Jeff Portnoy from Tropic Thunder. Okay, now, I'm, familiar... I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put in here. Right, okay. Because um, I'm also going to say that that's also my number four pick. Is it? Yeah, okay. so I think if I so 
if both our number fours are the same, so we can both speak. Right, I'll speak first, Dan. Um, <laughs> yeah. People who don't know about Tropic Thunder is it's a beautiful sort of. It's one of those movies that's on the same level of, as Galaxy Quest. It's like yeah. um, actors playing actors playing the character. Yeah, exactly. Playing the character of an actor. And I think that's very. I love that sort of parody thing where they're sort of playing exaggerated versions of themselves or exaggerated versions of actors in that in that position. And Tropic Thunder becomes. Tropic Thunder becomes that sort of thing where um, where it's Ben Stiller and Robert Downey Jr. and Jack Black as the sort yep. of very exaggerated actor characters who are sort of down their luck who join this join this war film and you know end up sort of becoming becoming the soldiers in in the war in in this war film and uh, I think I've only seen Tropic Thunder once or twice but. Um, I remember being Jack Black, very memorable. The character's very memorable in it. Yeah, it's it's the same thing with me. I haven't seen it in a while. Right, I'll allow you to speak it. about it now. You can you can go ahead. Yeah, it's it's he plays it like so well because obviously they're all actors anyway, and then like you said, the directors he's playing actors. <laughs> it's yeah. a very confusing thing, but like because obviously his character is. Um, I've not seen the film in ages, but it's he's like he's basically just, he's got an addiction and he's kind of basically just losing his mind. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's who he portrays, and he portrays it really well. Yeah, really well. Uh, obviously, it's if it's different like because there's like Robert Downey Jr. and Ben Stiller, who essentially, even though it's an ensemble thing, they like take up um, most of the film. When Jack Black gets his chance, he like takes the stage 100 percent. like when he gets his chance to do his thing he then becomes like the main person for whatever long the scene is he's doing yeah I, yeah i get he's, yeah he is he's, he's one of those a uh, bit of a scene stealer he was like that in goosebumps as well have you seen the goosebumps yeah. films he's, uh, he's, he's seen, in the second one of like a tiny goosebumps. bit goosebumps. yeah he's in the first one yeah. a lot and he's a real scene stealer in that as he is in this in my third pick Okay. Which is uh, Carl Denham from King Kong 2005. Okay. Okay. Right. I I don't think it's going to be on your list. Uh, uh, well, I see it, it is. It is on your list. It's not on number three, yeah. is it? Yeah. Oh, dear. <laughs> I would because the thing is, I reckon, I reckon literally think our list is going to be the exact same from now on. Right, okay, okay then. Um, well... I'll say that, um, well, let's do the same thing. Let me talk about it first. Yeah. And uh, then you can you can sort of butt in when you like. Um, yeah. It's a long one. The, the, it's Peter Jackson of King Kong. It is. And Jack Black sort of plays the sort of eccentric director who wants to film on, like, Skull Island or whatever. And um, he wants to film this great, this great sort of epic... Uh, uh, narrative film with his actors and whatever and Naomi Watts is sort of the girl that gets taken by King Kong played by Andy Serkis uh, who I could talk about for, for days because, oh, it's great. yeah I'm a big fan of Andy Serkis but I think Jack Black really plays the sort of so he's sort of the, he's sort of the leader of this adventure and he's got his video camera he's like very, he's trying to get sort of the shoot on track it's more serious isn't it Yeah. he's not as funny which I think seeing Jack Black in more of a serious narrative role is quite refreshing, to be honest. I think that's why he's at number three. Because of how sort of refreshing it is to see him in sort of a more serious role, wouldn't you say? Yeah. I'll let you, I'll, I'll give you the floor. Well, I actually, I've also remembered, I actually had three, no, three, two number threes. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to bump in the second one. Right, Okay. Or you could talk so about King Kong some, first. So you can have some variety. Well, again, it's interview with King Kong. He's just really good in that role. Yeah. Um, to the point where I think he is 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 great. And in, even though I know some people don't like the film, I quite like the film. I think it's quite enjoyable. Um, yeah. But and I don't know if this is going to be on your, your list. So I'll put this as my official number. Um, I'm going to go for uh, Jack Black playing Jack Black. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is from The Pick of Destiny, where he plays himself. 
Right, okay. Essentially. Because, okay. um, again, I actually really like this film, and I thought, well, it probably isn't going to be your number two or number one. Could so you sort of explain, pop- sort of explain that film? Yeah, so The Pick of Destiny is essentially the... Um, it was written by, I believe, Jack Black, and it was directed by... I can't remember his name. It's another musician who did, like, uh, United States of wherever was the one right. song he had. Um, and it's the, the story of Tenacious D, but it's, like, okay. blown up to, like, 100. So yeah. they, they face the devil... Um, and they like master, the songs you listed, Master Exploders in it, Kickapoo's in it, featuring Dio and Meatloaf. Right. Because okay. why not? Uh, and it's a story from how he was uh, like a kid in a Christian family, leaves to go join a rock band, finds Cage, um, who is played by Kyle. No, finds Kyle, who's played by Cage, it's confusing. Yeah. And then forms this, this band. Uh, ben Stiller's in it as well, I believe, again. <laughs> Nice. Good friends they must be. Yeah. I mean, obviously, he's going to be good at playing himself. Mm. But I feel like this film's also a bit underappreciated. I'm not going to be yeah, yeah. It. It's really good. It's really good. Well, on to number two. On to number two. Yeah, I, I've got a feeling this might be similar. Right. Well, I'll let you go first then. Well, okay. Yes. My number you're two. on a bit of a roll. You're on a bit of a roll, so I'll let you take this second one. My number two is uh, a film I've mentioned twice now, currently. Uh, and I'm going for Jack Black playing Poe, Kung Fu Panda. Right, okay. All, all, by the way, I will point out, I can't really pick a favourite. It's the first one or the second one. Okay. The third one's all right, but I'm picking just Poe in general. Um, obviously... It's animated. A lot of things, I think you can probably agree on this, a lot of things with Jack Black is not just him, it's the way he like moves his hands, and it's the way he moves, and it's kind of like body language yeah. he does. Yeah. So animation-wise, you know, it's like, oh, we well, might not get that. You might not get that kind of weird uh, um, movement. But it mm-hmm. works so well. Again, it's to natural libre, where like he's this panda who wants to like join these, like, the Furious Five, and then he becomes this underdog who basically mm. does no clue what he's doing, thinks that, you know, this uh, person's his dad. Spoilers, it's not, if you couldn't have guessed that. Yeah. Because <laughs> that happens in the second film. Yeah. And then he's like, oh, he can't do it. And then he ends up beating the you know, main bad guy with his uh, pinky finger. And mm-hmm. it's this whole thing, like, oh, Poe's a panda, and he's, a, you know, he's big, he's fat, he can't do anything. And then that's mm-hmm. what ends up. You know, winning him this whole thing, and he's again really good at being that underdog character who well, like, everyone can root for. My number two, yep, is from School of Rock. Okay, it's 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 Dewey Finn from School of Rock. There's a teacher that brings that brings that brings the rock yeah. and roll, that brings the uh, that brings the passion and the compassion yeah. to the to the kids of the school, and it's his sort of his most known. Role again. He's a musician, so he sort of channels that uh, that sort of side, that sort of side of him. After being kicked out of his of his own rock band in the film, he becomes the teacher, and um, he sort of brings music to them, and brings the brings the rock and roll, and turns the class into a, into into a into a rock band. So yeah, again, it's it's very highly rated. It's it's a, it was a bit of a, a, a critical success at the time. Um, it was. Uh, a bit of a hit, and it was the thing that really put Jack Black out on the map. So that's why I've gone for it as my as my number two. But okay. I suspect it might be your number one. Uh, your suspicions would be correct. Right. It, well, is, you... it is my number one. Well, may you elaborate then? May you give some some uh, elaboration? I will. So, like you said, um, mm. Dewey, or as through most of the film, he is known as Mr. Schneebly. Mm. which is his brother's name, I believe, Yeah. Uh, in the film. Um, yeah, like you said, obviously we mentioned the whole thing. Like he is in a rock band at the start. He gets mm. kicked out. I believe he gets kicked out because he, well, one, he does the stage dive and he's too, like, showy. Um, and then it's, he rings up, gets a phone call for his brother. He's like, oh, I want to be a teacher in the school. So he takes it. And then it's just this whole thing of, like, there's these kids who don't like him at the start. And then he hears them in music practice and then forms this rock band who yeah. 
cheat, well, I say cheat, who uh, essentially force the uh, this rock like competition to let them in because they claim that they're all sick. Mm-hmm. And then they join this, um, this like rock and roll sort of competition to try and win because like, oh, everyone gets involved. It's, yeah, Jack Black's a teacher and he's very good, very believable. He's an idiot, he's dumb, but he's very believable. Um, yeah. Th- I can't tell you the amount of times if either Piano gets mentioned or if Lawrence gets mentioned as in the name or just even randomly in my head. Anytime anything then gets mentioned or randomly, like if someone goes piano, the first thing I get in my head is just Jack Black going like, Lawrence is good at piano because it does yeah. that in the film. And he goes, oh, he will be rocking in my show like a car. And I get it in my head all the time and no one knows what it's from. It annoys me. Right, it's, like, okay. it's, it's that one scene of like he's teaching the kids the instrument. He gets someone to play smoke on the water. Um, someone plays drums and he starts singing um, and he's really good. Like he's this he's this guy who like he's down on his look, he's not in the band, you can tell he wants to make it, and then he gets for his kids and then he like it's almost like he goes, Right, he hasn't got a chance at being this famous musician, but he can teach these kids and these kids can mm-hmm. like make a name for themselves. So he's kind of using his mistakes to help them and elevate he's... them into mm. doing better. He's got that very kind, sort of that kind, tutely attitude. Yeah, which we exactly. don't normally see in Jack Black very much because he's like he's working with these um, kids, trying to get them to form them into sort of a uh, a rock band, and yeah. he's using all his skills. But also, he's be, he's very he's very kind and very um, uh, supportive, let's say, uh, with yeah. them. So, and that's good to see. It's good to see sort of a more. And I mean, normally he's he's very emotional, but normally it's very a lot of like outward emotion, like you know he's 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 trying to be funny, sort of uh, moving around. But in School of Rock, he's much more. He's got that heart. Yeah, exactly. He's got yeah, he's got that heart, and he's got that um, supportive nature as this character. So I think that's what that's what gets him uh, the number two for me. But I mean, my yeah, number I mean, one. I th- I think I've have we I think I think the switcheroo. We've think, yeah we've already we've already had. Switcheroo. Than this num- my number one. Yeah. It was your number two. Yeah. We've done a switch. My number one is is Poe the Panda <laughs> from Kung Fu Panda one, two, and three, and yeah. the TV show and the and the Christmas special or whatever the hell he's yeah. done. Um, a lot of it, and he seems up for anything, which is also another yeah, amazing does. mark of a person. No matter what the quality is of it, Jack Black is always a, a shining standout. So. Okay, so what what what's your what's your reasoning for putting putting Poe right. as number one? Well, my reason for Poe as number one is yeah, it is sort of again, it's another thing where it's Jack Black, but he's a panda. It's like no one, everyone's yes. looking down on Poe. Everyone's thinking, oh, he's just a fat panda. He don't come from anywhere. You know, there's yeah. nothing special about him. He's not going to do nothing special. But then he be- he like through a series of unfortunate events, he becomes like the dragon warrior, and he's got the destiny to defeat. Uh, the 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 tiger in the first one, and is it, I don't know what it's not even a tiger, is it? It's, it's like a snow. no, it's a yes, yeah, it's a snow leopard. Snow leopard, and the, she, she, the help the tiger helps him. The tiger lady yeah. helps him, and the furious five, or whatever they're called, and um, he he gets help, and he has to discover this little power that's sort of deep inside him. He has to discover the power. He has to discover the kung fu, uh, the kung fu spirit, and he's adored. He's adored these these heroes. And now he gets to become one of them. So he's sort of still living his dream as like a fanboy. My favourite scene is yeah. where he's going around. He's going around that uh, the big sort of hall with all the artefacts in it. And he's like, oh, look, I know exactly what this is. This is the something, something, something. He turns over and knocks it over on the floor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he knocks it down on the floor and breaks it. And then he goes over to something else and he does the same to that. And it's like, oh, uh, that is such a funny scene to me. But and I think it just gets better. Kung Fu Panda 2 is like my definitive Kung Fu Panda film. You see, I can't pick. I can't. I can tell. Kung Fu Panda 2 without a shadow of a doubt. Every time Kung Fu Panda 2 is on the television, like on BBC or something, I will go and I'll sit down and I'll watch it. Because see, I love I think, Kung Fu Panda 2. I think the second one, as far as Jack Black goes, mm. is better. Because it's more of like, it's more of a, a deeper it's, story. It's deeper story. It's more of his past. It's maybe yeah. sort of 
discovering where he comes from. We've got Gary Oldman as that peacock, and he just blows it out of the water. Yeah, he is a, he is the best kung fu pan. Not, I mean, I'm not sat here rating kung fu panda villains, but I'm like, <laughs> like I can do better things with my time than rate kung fu panda villains. But Gary Oldman as that peacock is an absolute, in an, an an absolute godsend. So he's my favorite. Sick. Villain. Yeah, see, I think the second one's better for Poe, but I think the first one's better for like I think I think other characters are better in the first one. Yeah, it's like how okay, it's like how. Right, I heard I once heard the argument when I was discussing Kung Fu Panda because that's what I do. I only talk about truth, yeah. you know. I was discussing Kung Fu Panda with someone, and they were like, "Do you think they chose the animals like based on the person?" Mm-hmm. And I go, "Well, hmm, that's yeah. a very interesting thought." Because in a way, Jack Black is a panda. Yeah. Not because not because he's on the larger side. That's not a problem. But the fact that he's like unassuming, but he can give you he can give you such such fire and such heart and such emotion, and you don't really see it from just looking at him. I mean, I think yes and no. Right. Okay. Because also, <laughs> there's the one story that I always love with um. Kung Fu Panda, right? You know, you know Master Shifu, right? I do. I think what what an what animal? He's he's the, the the teacher that's not the turtle. Um, that's Master he, Uguay. He, he, yes, Uguay's the turtle. You, uh, Dustin Hoffman is Master Shifu. Yeah, he's a red panda. What what, what animal? What? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> the funny thing is, Dustin Hoffman thought he was a raccoon for like the whole first film. No. Oh. I wasn't told to the end that he's a red panda, but like also, yeah, Master Uguay is in the first one. Who and I don't mind the um, the sheep or the lamb, whatever it is, in the second film. But Master Ugwe crushes it with the whole like teacher aspects, the whole like mystical teacher who knows everything. Yeah, yeah. Like when he turns to leaves, man. Mm. Oh, it's like he turns, petals, he? he turns to yeah, rose exactly. petals, doesn't he? He turns to rose petals. Gets the water. Yeah. It's got a whole that whole speech about like oh. what is it it's it's uh yesterday's history tomorrow is a mystery and today is a gift that's why it's called a present yeah uh, like not long after that yeah he turns the rose petals. i guess the water works man i know he becomes one with the force he just floats away into rose petals oh god it's such a gives gives, gives she through his stick yeah you know what you know what one of my favorite moments is the dragon do you remember the dragon scroll yeah, this is blank. <laughs> blank. Uge builds it up as this, oh, there is no greater knowledge than the knowledge in the Dragon Scroll, Shifu, or something like that. And then <laughs> yeah. it's it's there the whole time in the film. And everyone's looking at it. Poe goes, oh, it's the famous Dragon Scroll, or whatever. And then when it falls off, you know, there's like a big fight or whatever with there's no leopard. And the thing falls off, yeah. and Shifu goes over to it. It's blank. I think that's yeah. perfect. In fact, that's such the expectations of something... So mysterious and so and so uh, greatly powerful, and it's nothing because it's what you make of it. Yeah, exactly. It's blank because it's what you make of it, and that's such a great message. These they're great. We everyone sort of passes aside animated films, especially ones marketed towards children. But really, kids need messages as much as adults do. Yeah, exactly. And especially in animation, especially they can do such such emotion. They can bring so many messages to the table, and it's about that. It's about giving you, a, giving you. Um, giving you a message that resonates with you. So yes, the scroll is empty, because it's what you make of it. What do you want the scroll to say? That sort of yeah. thing. And I feel like it's greatly overlooked. Not just Kung Fu Panda, but just having a having a, a, a deep emotional message in a, in, a, in a kid's animated film. Everyone just overlooks it, but when done right, it can give you some really, really heart-wrenching stuff. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's, uh, Sorry, I was that a bit too like... preachy? Was that... No. No, I mean you're. It's it's right. It's Kung Fu Panda, man. You're speaking speaking the wisdom. Of Thank the you. Film. What are you doing? Thank you. No, it's... <laughs> you said you had oh, more so than good. one. Yes. What was it? No, no, my number one was Mister was Mister Sneebly. Right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. See, because because we we swapped we swapped at number two because I I, I I did Poe first. How weird is that? I think that's a bit weird. Yeah, I know, right. <laughs> Saying that, you kind of make me want to put Poe as number one. <laughs> oh, did I convince you? <laughs> I think you have a little bit. Yeah. Poe is number one. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah, I'll put Poe as number one, which makes like half of our list the same. But you know what? No, listen, I think four, four, three, two, and one, they're all the same. Yeah, pretty much. It was only number five that was different. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> um, but 
going on to our, our weekly rec this week. Um, yes. You may ask me, Corey, is it a film that has Jack Black in it? Why are you asking me? Oh, no, I'm asking you to ask me. Oh, I want to ask. Okay. 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 Right. Let's get a bit of role play going. Come on, Corey. You've got to ask me if this film has Jack Black in it. You do like the role play, don't you? I do, I do. Right, Murray, has your, uh, has your weekly rep got, uh, got Jack Black in it? It does, it does, esteemed co-host. It does have Jack Black in it. Oh. Oh. I don't, I know, what, what, I don't, know, what, I don't know what you meant by that, but um, <laughs> it, it, it does have Jack Black in it, yes. Uh, and it's actually okay. a film we've mentioned before, but can you guess which one is it in this episode? Oh. Okay, well, if it's not that hard, we've not mentioned many. No, no. <laughs> Uh, okay, I, I think it's going to be one of the bottom ones. I think right, it's going to three guesses. Got three Make... guesses. You know what? Okay, j- just just for the meme, just for the joke. First guess, Kung Fu Panda. No, no, it's not. Okay. It does have big animals in it, though. Okay, okay, well, that makes it. Okay, I think I know what it is. Right. I think I know what it is. Is it, is it Jumanji? No, it's not. <laughs> oh. It does have big, big animals animal. in it, though. It does. Big animals. I think the film has got a big animal in it. I mean, big. Uh, we've mentioned it on this show. We have this. Okay. Yeah, this episode we've talked about it. Uh, it's, okay. So this is this is now showing the uh, the short short memory problems. What I your have. what your your short memory problems? <laughs> Just, just brain uh, of a goldfish. No, just four seconds. Forget. Yeah, I know, right? Even though it's like goldfish actually have pretty good memory. Do they? Yeah. Oh. The whole like memory of a goldfish is completely um, not true. I think elephants don't have good memory, however. Or even though they might have good memory as well. Oh, I don't know. I don't, uh, I, really? That's blown my mind. One more guess. Okay. Well, that I'm gonna. Okay. Oh, oh, King Kong. Is it King Kong? Yes, it is. You're right. There we go. <laughs> it is King Kong. I like how you went through. I didn't even think you picked Jumanji. I thought the big animals was enough. <laughs> You've gone through every single Jack Black film that has a big animal in it. <laughs> yeah. I've yes, got to mention is, King Kong. Yeah, my weekly wreck is the 2005 K- Peter Jackson's King Kong. Um, yes. It comes off the back of um, Fellowship or Two Towers. Uh, do you know what year it came out? It's 2005. Uh, well, the last World of Rings film was 2004, which is Return of the King. Oh, right. Okay, never mind then. It comes after Return yeah. of the King. Um, yeah. It's got, uh, I think it's got everything a King Kong film needs. It's got yeah. the jeopardy and the, and, the, uh, and the action of King Kong in the city. It's got um, the mystery and the big creatures of Skull Island. It's got that very famous, uh, I remember the McDonald's ads uh, to this day. Where it would show King Kong fighting the t- fighting the big dinosaurs, fighting the big T Rexes, right? Yeah. It would show King Kong fighting the T Rexes, and you get that toy of, of King Kong in your Happy Meal or whatever, and he'd have a little trigger on his back. When you pull the trigger, he'd, he'd move his arms, so you could like reenact him fighting the T Rexes or whatever. Yeah. So the fe- the effects in this film still hand up like like I watched it recently, and the effects in this film still hold up. Like Andy Circus man, he knows a thing or two about visual. He knows a thing or two about how to how to act in motion capture. He is the king of motion capture. Oh, one hundred percent. You know he he's not afraid to you know wear the ping pong ball suit, move around as King Kong. He comes fresh out, fresh off Gollum, which is probably the biggest hit of his career. So yeah. I think and he, and ever since he's become accustomed to playing. Uh, ape characters because he played Caesar in yeah, Planet of the Apes. So there is that. And again, Jack Black is in it as well. Um, I struggle. Oh, did I already say Naomi Watts? I think I already did. And I, I struggle to think of the main man's name in it, but uh, it'll come to me. Uh, Adrian Brody, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> Adrian Brody's in it as well. Um, Jack Black, of course, plays the director character. Andy Serkis has a live action role. He plays like sort of the cook on the ship, the sort of creepy cook who tells the story of Skull Island. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. Uh, the effects, again, still show up. You get, it's sort of reminiscent of the original uh, King Kong. Yeah. 
it's reminiscent of the original King Kong from uh, 1933, I think. No, is it 1933 or 1976? It's... I think it's 1976. The stop-motion uh, stop King Kong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or is it 1933? I've got conflicting reports. I think it's 1933. The one where, the one where it's like, it's like a stop-motion. I know, I know what you mean. I think it's 1933. I'm going to go with 1933. I might be wrong. I was stuck between those two. Um, the 1933 King Kong, uh, it's a night six. It almost plays with the same sort of story beats, but it re, but it sort of yeah. modernizes it in a way, but it's still set in that time period. But the effects are much improved and the actions much improved. So that is my that is my weekly rec for this week, the 2005 King Kong. Uh, I would also like to point out, actually, I think well, I think the Tomb of King came out 2003, not 2004. Oh, right, okay. I also got my years me still. Oh, dear. Fellowship. Memory is not good on this show. <laughs> it's not. It's like, I think 2001 is Fellowship, 2002 is Towers, right. and 2003 is Return of the King. Fair so enough. I don't know if he did anything in 2004, or he might not have. I ain't too sure about that. Right. Um, also, a couple of fun facts about this, because why not? Um, first off, you are correct. He is 1933. Just had a, yes. a cheeky, cheeky look up. Um, also, he did not wear makeup for his film. Because he oh, heard that, can't. yes, uh, and Jack Black didn't wear makeup oh, right, for okay. his film because he heard a rumor that Clint Eastwood never wore makeup for his films, so Jack Black decided not to. All oh, right. Well, also, also, it gives you the real look, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. He also did want to try and cut his hair like it is in the film, but Peter Jackson didn't like it, so he made oh, him wear enough. a wig. I found that out this morning as well. Nice. Well, would you like my real rating? Yes, can you uh, can you give it a rating out of ten? It please? is a solid, respectable seven point five. Decent. And I say that without any any debate at all. Without any self debate at all, you can you can argue it, Coy, but I will go seven point five. I will not argue it at all. I've I've seen Fair the enough. film. I actually I own it on DVD. I had it when I was last year. I've had it for years, nice. and I quite enjoyed it for the for the couple times I've seen it. Pretty I think good. it was on. I think we were on holiday once in in Wales or something like that, and it came on yeah. the TV around Christmas time. And I was like, not this year, obviously, but like ten, I don't know, five years ago. And yeah. we and I watched it through for the first time as a you know teenager, and I was just blown away by by the effects, by the you know the roaring King Kong and the big T Rexes and the and the scene where they're, they're that stampede of those big long neck dinosaurs. There's the sort of yeah. the, the sort of. Uh, small type monkeys like baboon things that like attack them uh that sort of thing as well so i've grown very all the all the visual effects and the story and stuff like that so but to, but to close out this episode yes we are bringing you tenacious d itself are we gory yes so if anyone uh, hasn't heard them yet this is your first introduction yeah it, actually i was going to put a tenacious d album as my weekly rec but then I thought, well, Fair. we're going to play Tenacious D at the end of this show, so I won't. No, we'll, 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 we'll give our listeners this. We'll, this give, you, we'll song. give you, dearest listener, a chance to listen to Tenacious D for yourself. It is Wonder Boy in 2001 by Tenacious D. <laughs> 